When looking at the details of the design and build quality of this Franklin Ace 2200, you might think it was built at a time when the company was in the midst of an upswing. Technically, that might be correct, given that several years earlier, Franklin Computer Corp was bankrupt. Despite all it had going for it, the Ace 2200 would be the last Apple clone Franklin ever produced. This is largely due to the changing legal climate of the mid to late 1980s. The Ace 2000, 2100, and 2200 are commonly known as Apple IIe clones, but neither the inside nor the exterior really resembles a IIe. Hey guys, this is Jacob from Mac Retrospective, and today we're going to be taking a first look at this Franklin Ace 2200. We're finding conflicting information about the dates of production for the Ace 2200. Some sources have said the release date was sometime in 1987 or 1988, but that seems unlikely given that much of the hardware inside and features were outdated by then. We're inclined to think that the release was sometime in 1985. It was sold by Sears for $949.99, which would be about $2,265 in today's money. Franklin's goal right out of the gate was to produce Apple clones that were better than the originals. The Ace 2200 might well have accomplished this in terms of hardware, but its ongoing legal battles with Apple meant that Franklin had to write its own operating system, which limited its ability to produce fully Apple-compatible computers. Franklin also designed some of the hardware to be Apple-compatible, but with some physical limitations preventing parts from being interchangeable. As an example, the 140 kilobyte floppy disk drives in the Ace 2200 were fully Apple compatible, but you could not put an Apple drive into a Franklin Ace 2200 because the drive enclosure mounts to the upper part of the case. It's commonly believed that all of the systems in the Ace 2000 series were identical other than the number of floppy drives they came with. This isn't actually the case. The Ace 2000 was a network system with 64 kilobytes of RAM and no floppy disk drives. The 2100 had 128 kilobytes of RAM in one drive, and the 2200 had 256 kilobytes of RAM and two floppy drives. An optional 320 kilobyte RAM expansion board was available for the 2200. All three of the Ace 2000 systems had two edge-mounted Centronic-style ports, which were supposed to be used for an external expansion interface, like the similar devices sold for the TI-99 and the Commodore PET. For your $950, you'd get a modern-style desktop system with a 65 SCO2 processor running at 1.02 MHz, 256 kilobytes of RAM with 576 kilobytes being the maximum, 560 by 192 resolution graphics, and two five and a quarter inch floppy drives on a built-in controller. The Ace 2200 ran FDOS, which is Franklin's version of Apple DOS. Legal requirements meant that the latter systems like the Ace 2200 suffered from some compatibility issues. The Franklin Ace 2200 came with a pretty nice keyboard containing function keys. Earlier Franklin systems had to use combinations of other keys to access functions reserved for the open and close Apple keys, but the Ace 2200 had what they called open and closed function keys. Unfortunately, our system did not come with the keyboard. Taking a look at the front of the Ace 2200, you'll see the badge, two five and a quarter inch floppy disk drives, and indicator lights showing system activity and diagnostic information. On the side, you can see the cover plate for the two edge connectors. On the back, you can see that the I.O. connectors are in the form of slot adapters, similar to those found in ISA expansion slots. However, both of the two expansion slots on the Ace 2200 are strictly internal. There is a 9-pin keyboard connector, composite video output, parallel port, game controller port, option switch, volume control, case fan, AC power connector, and the power switch. We purchased our system for $120, including a very yellow generic composite monitor, 
Branded as the Zuckerman Study Mate 2, sold by Zuckerman Computers from San Jose, California. The clips that hold the front fascia were broken off from being poorly packaged in the same box as the monitor. Luckily, it looks like none of the functional components were damaged. That's all for now. Thanks for watching, and be sure to check out some of our other Franklin First Look videos. I'll see you next time.